Ashley Brock reading Nora Roberts' book, Sea Swept, Chapter 4. Since there seemed to be nothing cold to drink in the house but beer, carbonated soft drinks, and some suspiciously looking milk, Ethan put the kettle on the boil. He brew up some tea, iced it, and a jewelry tall glass out on the porch while his evening moseyed in. He was four, he was in hour fourteen of his day and ready to relax, which wasn't going to be easy, he decided while he hunted up tea bags and overheard Cam and Seth holding some new pissing match in the living room, figured they must enjoy snapping at each other or they wouldn't spend so much time at it. For himself, he wanted a quiet hour, a decent meal, then one of the two cigars he allowed himself per day. The way things sounded, he didn't think the quiet hour was going to make the agenda. As he dumped tea bags into the boiling water, he heard feet stomping up the stairs, followed by the bullet sharp sound of a slamming door. The kids are driving me. Bad shit. Cam can't complain as he stalked, complained as he stalked into the kitchen. You can't say boo to him without him squaring up for a fight. <laughs> mm-hmm. Argumentative, smart mouth troublemaker, feeling grossly put upon, Cam snagged a beer from the fridge. Must be like looking in a mirror. Like hell. Don't know what I was thinking. You're such a peaceful soul. Moving at his own relaxed pace, Ethan bent down to search out an old glass pitcher. Let's see. You were just about 14 when I came along. First thing he did was pick a fight so he'd have an excuse to blow him a nose. <laughs> For the first time in hours, Cam felt a grin spread. That was just a welcome to the family tab. Besides, you gave me a hell of a black eye. I said, thank you. There was that. Kid's too smart to try to punch you. Easy continued and began to dump genuine scoops of sugar into the picture. So he razzles you instead. He sure as hell's got your attention, doesn't he? It was irritating because it was true. You've got him pegs of Neely. Why don't you take him on? Because I'm on the water every morning at dawn. Kid like that needs supervision. That, Ethan thought, was the story. He'd stick to it through all the tortures of hell. <laughs> of the three of us, you're the only one not working. I'm going to have to fix that. Cam yeah, Oh, yeah? With a mild snort, Ethan finished making his tea. That'll be the day. The day's coming up fast. Social worker was here today. Ethan grunted. Let the implications turn over his mind. What'd she want? The drug is out. She's going to be talking to you, too, when Philip already talked to Seth, which is what I was trying to diplomatically ask him about when he started foaming at the mouth again. Kid proud now. Think of more of Anna Spinelli. The great legs and tiny briefcase. <sighs> well, I lost my place. Then of Seth, if we don't pass, she's going to work on pulling him. He isn't going anywhere. That's what I said. Dragged his hand through his hair again, which for some reason reminded him he meant to get a haircut in Rome. Seth wasn't the only one, not going anywhere. But, bro, we're about to make some serious adjustments around here. Things are fine as they are. Ethan filled a glass with ice, poured tea over it so it's had a crack. Easy for you to say. Cam stepped out on the porch, let the screen door slam shut behind him. He walked to the rail, watched Ethan sleek Chesapeake. Babe Retriever Simon played tag and tumbled with the fat puppy. Upstairs, Seth had obviously decided to seek revenge by turning the radio up to ear splitting, screaming, headbanging rock, blast through the windows. Cam just twitched. He'd be damned if he'd tell the kid to turn it down. Too cliche, too terrifyingly adult a response. He sipped his beer, struggled to loosen the knots in his shoulders, and concentrated on the way the lower green sun tossed white diamonds onto the water. The wind was coming up so that the marsh grass waved like a field of Kansas wheat. The drake of a pair of ducks that had set up house where the water bent at the edge of the trees flew by quacking. Lucy, I'm home, was all Cam could think. It nearly made him smile again. Under the roar of music, he heard the gentle rhythmic crack of the rocker. Beer found from the lip of the bottom when he whirled. He just stopped rocking and stared at him. What? See the man. Christ came. You look like you've seen a ghost. Nothing. Cam swept a hand over his face and carefully lowered himself to the porch so he could lean back against but Nothing. You pee the butts at the beard. I'm a little edgy. Usually you are if you stay in one place more than we. Don't climb up my back, Ethan. Just a comment. Because Cam looked exhausted and pale, Ethan reached in the breast pocket of his shirt, took out two cigars. One hurt to change your smoking after dinner routine. Cigar. Came's eye. Yeah, why not? 
Rather than move, he let Ethan light the first and pass it to him. Leaning back again, he blew a few lazy smoke rings. When the music shot off abruptly, he felt he achieved a small personal victory. For the next ten minutes, there wasn't a sound but the lap of water, the call of birds, and the talk of the breeze. The sun dropped lower, turning the western sky into a soft, rosy haze that bled into the water and blurred the horizon. Shadows deepened. It was like Ethan came used to ask no questions, sit in silence and wait to understand the need for quiet. He nearly forgotten that admirable trait of his brother's, but maybe he came admitted he nearly forgotten how much he loved the brother Ray and Stella had given him. But even remembering, he wasn't sure what to do about it. See you fix the steps, Ethan commented. When he judged Cam was relaxing. Yeah, the place could use a coat of paint, too. We'll have to get to that. They were going to have to get to a lot of things, Cam thought, but the quick creak of the rocker kept taking his mind back to the afternoon. Have you ever had a dream while you were wide awake? He could ask it. He could ask us was Ethan, and Ethan would think and consider. After sitting in a nearly empty glass on the porch beside the rocker, Ethan said he just car. Well, I guess I have. The mind likes to wonder when you let it. It could have been that, Cam thought to himself. His mind had wandered, maybe even gotten lost for a bit. That could have been why he thought he saw his father rocking on the porch. A conversation. We should think he, he decided that was all. <sighs> Remember our dad used to bring his fiddle out here. Hot summer nights, he'd sit where you're sitting and play for hours. He had such big hands. He could sure make that fiddle sing. You baked it up really well. Ethan shrugged. Put lazy on his cigar. His cigar. Some, you ought to take it. He'd have wanted you to have it. Ethan shifted his quiet eyes, locked them on Cam's. Neither spoke for a moment. No had you. I guess I will, but not right yet. I'm not ready. Yeah, Cam blew out smoking again. You still got that guitar they gave you that Christmas? I loved it here. Didn't want to bang it around with me. Cam looked at his fingers, flexed them as though they were about to lay them on the strings. Guess I haven't played in more than a year. Maybe we should try Seth on some instrument. Mom used to swear playing a tune pumped out the aggression. He turned his head as the dogs began to bark and race around the side of the house, expecting somebody. Well, he's his brother. Thought he wasn't coming down till Friday. Let's just call this a family emergency. Cam tapped out the stub of the cigar before he rose. Hope to Christ he brought some decent food and none of that fancy peabod crap he likes to eat. Philip showed into the kitchen, bouncing a large bag on top of a jumbo bucket of chicken and shouting out waves of irritation. He dumped the food on the table, skimming a hand through his hair, and scrowled at his brother. I'm here, he snapped as the came to the back. What's the damn problem? We're hungry, Cape said easily, peeling the top from the bucket. He grabbed the drumstick. You got dirt on here, I'm an executive pants there, Bill. God Damn it! Furious now, Philip brushed impatiently at the palm prints on his legs. When are you gonna teach that idiot dog not to jump on people? You cart around fried chicken. Dog's gonna see if he can get a piece. Makes him smart, if you ask me. Unoffended, Ethan went to a cupboard for plates. <sighs> you get fries? Came poked in the back, snagged one. Cold. Somebody better nuke these. If I do, they'll blow up or disintegrate. I'll do it. Get something to dish up the cold slaw. Philip took a breath, then one more. The drive down from Baltimore was long, and the traffic had been ugly. When you two girls have finished playing house, maybe you tell me why I broke a date with a very hot CPA. The third date, by the way, which was dinner at her place, with the definite possibility of sex afterward, and said just spent a couple hours in miserable traffic to deliver a fucking buck and a chicken to a couple of boobs. <clears throat> First off, I'm tired of cooking. Can't keep coats on his plate. Took a biscuit. And even more tired of tossing out what I've cooked because even the pup who drinks out of the toilet with regularity won't touch it. But that's only the surface. He took another hefty bite of chicken as he walked to the doorway and shot up for Seth. The good news to be here. We're all in this. Fine. Great. Philip dropped in a chair, tugging at his tie. No, no use sulking because your accountant isn't going to be running your figures tonight, pal. Ethan offered him a friendly smile on a plate. Tax season's heating up. With a side fill of screws up, so I'll be lucky to get a warm look from her until after April 15th. And I was so close. None of us were likely to be getting much action for the next little while. Cam jerked head as Seth's feet pounded down the stairs. The patter of a little fake plays hells with a sex life. Cam took away the urge for another beer, settled on iced tea as Seth stepped into the kitchen. The boy scanned the room. 
It's no swishing. It's in a spicy chicken. But he didn't dive into the bucket as he would have liked it. What's the deal? He demanded and tucked his hands in his pockets while his stomach yearned. Family maiden came out with food. Said he took a chair himself as he's and put the freshly buzzed fries on through. Shit. Can't repeat him what's that state where he is. If you're not hungry, you can just listen. I could eat. Seth sauteed it over the table so it's got to be better than the crude you've been trying to pass off as food. You know, he said it in his mild drawl, but Cam could snarl. Seems to me I'd be grateful if somebody tried to put together a hot meal for me from time to time, even if it was crude. With his eyes on set, he's in tip down the bucket, contemplating his choices, especially if that somebody was doing the best he could. Cuz was eating, Seth flushed, squirmed, and shrugged as he plucked out a fat breast. Nobody asked him to cook. All the more reason might work better if you took turns. He doesn't think I can do anything. So I sneered at Bert Kemp, so I don't. You know, it's tempting to toss his little fish back into the pond. You can't double salt on his fries. Struggle to hold on to a shimmering timber. I could be in a robot this time tomorrow. So go, said Size Flash, full banger in the past. Go wherever the hell you want. As long as it's out of my face, I don't need you. Smart mouthed little brat, I've had it. Camp had a long reach, and used it now to shoot a hand across the table and pluck Seth out of a chair. He went to fill up his mouth protest, he's and shook his head. You think I've enjoyed spending the last two weeks babysitting some snot no monster with a piss poor attitude? I put my life on hold to do with you. Big deal, said the turn sheet white and was ready for the blow. He was sure it would come, but he wouldn't back down. All you do is run around collecting trophies and screwing women. Go back where you came from. Keep doing it. I don't give a shit. Cam watched the edges of his own vision turn red. Fearing frustration, he hissed in his blood like a snake primed to strike. He saw his father's hands at the end of his arms. Not raised, but the man who had used those hands on him. With such casual violence throughout his childhood, before he did something unforgivable, he dropped Seth back into his chair. His voice was quiet now, and the voice in the room vibrating with his control. If you think I'm staying for you, you're wrong. I'm staying for Ray. If you got any idea where the system will tell you, if one of us decides you're not worth the trouble, foster homes, that's thought, strangers, or worse, her, because his legs were trembling badly, he locked his feet around the legs of his chair. You don't care what they do with me. That's just one more thing you're wrong about. Cam said, you don't want to be grateful, fine. I don't want your goddamn gratitude. But if you'll start showing some respect and you'll start showing it now. It's not just me who's going to be hounding your sorry ass pal. It's the three of us. Cam sat down again. Wait, his composure to salt fly. <sighs> the social worker who was here today, Spinelli, Anna Spinelli, has some concerns about the environment. What's wrong with the environment? Ethan wanted to know. Nasty little altercation had cleared the air, he decided. Now they could get to the details. It's a good, solid house, a nice area, school's good, crime, so I got the impression I'm the environment. At the moment, I'm the only one here supervising things. The three of us will go down as guardians. Philip pointed out, he poured a glass of ice tea and said it casually next to the hand. To the hand, said that fisted on the table. Imagine the boy's throat would be burning down, dry right now. I checked with the lawyer after you called. The primary paperwork should go through by the end of the week. There'll be a probationary period, regular home studies, and meetings, evaluations. But unless there's serious objection, it doesn't look like a problem. Spinelli's a problem. Cam refused to let the altercation spoil his appetite. <laughs> I'm reached for more to. Classic do-gooder, great legs, serious mind. I know she talked to the kid, but he's not inclined to share their conversation, so I'll share mine. She had doubts about my qualifications as guardian, single man, no steady means of employment, no permanent residence. There are three of us. Philip frowned and pointed and poked at his saw. A trick of guilt was working through and he didn't care for it. We drop on it out. Miss Spinelli of the gorgeous Italian eyes, countered with the sad fact that I happened to be the only one of the three of us actually living here with the kid, and it was tactive, tactively implied that out of the three of us, I'm the least likely candidate for guardian, so I tossed out the idea of all of us living here. What do you mean, living here? <laughs> Philip Trump's book. I work in Baltimore. I've got a condo. How the hell am I supposed to live here and work there? That'll be a problem, Kim. Bigger one will be how you'll fit all your clothes into the closet in your old room. Well, Philip tried to choke out a response. Ethan tapped a finger on the edge of the table. He thought of his small and to him perfect house, the quiet and solitude of it, and he saw the way Seth stared at his plate with dark, baffled eyes. 
How long you figured it would take? I don't know. Came drag both hands through his hair. Six months. Maybe a year. A year. All Philip could do is close his eyes. Jesus. You talked to the lawyer about it. Came through. Say it was what? But we present a United Front to social services or they're going to pull them. And I've got to find work. Work? Phil's misery dissolved in a grin. You? Doing what? There aren't any racetracks in St. Chris, and the Chesapeake, God bless her, sure ain't the men. I'll find something. Study doesn't mean fancy. I'm not looking at something. I'll need an armory suit for. He was wrong. Can't realize this damn business was gonna spoil his appetite. The way I figured, Spinelli's gonna be back tomorrow, the next day at the least. We have to hammer this out. It has to look like we know what the hell we're doing. I'll take my vacation time early. Phil bid farewell the two weeks he planned to spend in the Caribbean. That buys us a couple weeks. I can work with a lawyer, deal with a social worker. I'll deal with her. I can't smile. I like the looks of her, and I have to get some perks out of this. Of course, all this depends on what the kid said to her today. I told her I wanted to stay. Says Mambo. Tears were rolling his stomach. The food sat untouchable. Ray said I could. He said I could stay here. He said it'd fix it, so I could. I'm worried what's left of him. Can't wait until Seth looked at his eyes. So we'll fix it. Later, when the moon was up and the dark water was slashed by its luminous white beam, Philip stood on the dock. The air was cold now. The damp wind carrying the raw edge of the winter that fought not to yield the spring it suited his mood. There was a war raging inside him between conscience and ambition. In two short weeks, the life he had planned out, plotted meticulously and in with deliberation and simple hard work had shattered. Now, still numb with grief for his father, he was being asked to transplant himself to compose those careful plans. Compromise those careful plans. He'd been 13 when Ray and Stella Quinn took him in. Most of those years he spent on the street, dodging the system. He was an accomplished thief, an enthusiastic brawler. He used drugs and liquor to do all the ugliness. The projects of Baltimore were his turf, and when a drive-by shooting left him bleeding on those streets, he was prepared to die. To simply end it. Indeed, the life he'd led up to that point when he wound up in a gutter choked with garbage into that night. He lived, and for reasons he had never understood, the Quins wanted him. They opened a thousand fascinating doors for him. No matter how often, how defiantly he tried to slam them shut again, they didn't allow it. They gave him choices and hope and a family. They offered him a chance for an education that had saved his soul. He used what they'd given him to make himself into the man he was. He studied and worked, and he buried that miserable boy deep, miserable boy deep. His position at Innovations, the top advertising firm in the metropolitan area, was solid. No one doubted that Philip Quinn was on the fast track to the top. And no one knew, no one who knew the man who wore the elegant tailored suits, who could order a meal in perfect French and always knew the proper wine, would have believed he had once bartered his body for the price of a dime bag. He had pride in that, perhaps too much pride, but he considered it his tre testament to the Quinns. There was enough of that selfish serve selfish self-serving boy still inside him to rebel thought of giving up one inch of it but there's too much the man rain still had molded considered doing otherwise somehow he had to find a compromise he turned and looked back at the house the upstairs was dark Seth was in the bed by now Philip mused he didn't have a clue how he felt about the boy he recognized him understood him and he supposed resented just a bit of those parts of himself he saw when young set the lochner was he Ray Quinn's son? There, Phil thought as his teeth clenched, more resentment than even the possibility of it. But the man he'd all but worshipped for more than half his life, really fallen off his pedestal, succumbed to temptation, betrayed wife and family. And if he had, how could he have turned his back on his own blood? How could this man who had made strangers his own, his own ignore for more than a decade a son who'd come from his own body? Got enough problems, Phil reminded himself. First was to keep a promise, keep the boy. He walked back, using the back porch light to guide him. Came set on the steps. He's in the rocker. I'll go back into Baltimore in the morning, Phil announced. I'll see what the lawyer can firm up. Said the social worker was named Spinelli. Yeah, Cam nursed a cup of black heart. And, uh, Spinelli. She'd be country. She'd be county, probably out of Prince Anna. I'll pass that on details he thought he concentrated on the facts the way i see it we're gonna have to come off as three model citizens i already passed phil smiled then two of you are gonna have to work on your act i told spinelli i'd get a job even the thought of it disgusted came i'd hold off on that a while 
this came from Ethan, who got quite in the shops. I got an idea. I want to think of it. Think on it a while more. Seems to me, he went on, that was filling me around. Both of us working, you could be running the house. Oh, oh, Jesus. What's all can't kid manage? It goes like this. Ethan paused, rocked, continued. You be what they call primary care caregiver. You're available if the school calls with a problem, so have to get sick or whatever. Makes sense. Philip agreed, feeling better, agreed to camp. You're mommy. Fuck you. There's no way to ma for mommy to talk. If you think I'm going to be stuck washing dirty socks and swabbing the toilet, you wasted that fine education you're so proud of. Just temporarily, Ethan said, though he enjoyed the image of his brother wearing an apron, hunting up cobwebs with feather duster. We'll work out shifts. Seth ought to have some regular chores, too. We always did. But it's going to fall to you for the next few days, anyway. While well, Philip figures out how we handle the legal end, and I see how I can juggle my time. I've got business of my own to deal with. I've got business of my own to deal with. Coffee was beginning to burn a hole in his gut. Cam drank it down anyway. My stuff scattered all over Europe. Well, Seth's in school all day, isn't he? Absolutely the reaching down to stroke the dog store beside you. Fine. Great. Cam gave up. Yo, he said, point of film. Bring some groceries back with you. We're out of damn near everything. And Ethan can throw whatever you bring together into meal. Everybody makes their own bed, god damn it. I'm not a maid. What about breakfast, Philip so said dryly. You're not going to send your men off in the morning without a low, hot meal, are you? Can't mind him boldly. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Might as well. He sat on the steps of the camp, leaned back on his elbow. Somebody ought to talk to Seth about cleaning up his language. <laughs> oh, yeah? Can't marry Sorry. That'll work. He swears that way in front of the neighbors, the social workers, his teachers. It's going to give him a bad impression. How's the school work, anyway? Hello, how's the I know? Now, mother, Phil trotted and laughed when Cam's elbow jabbed his ribs. Keep it up, and you're going to end up with another room suit, Ace. Let me change, and we can go come around somewhere better yet. Philip arched up bro, so his gaze over toward Ethan, then back to Cam, approving the plan. Cam snatched, scratched his chin, set down his empty cup. They shot off the steps in tandem, so fast that Ethan barely had a chance to blink. His fist shot out. His first... His fist shot out, was blocked, and he was hauled out of the chair by armpits and ankles, cursing all the way. Simon leaped up to bark the ladder lay and raced race circles around the men who hauled his struggling master off the porch. Inside the kitchen, the pup wiggled maddeningly and yipped in answer. To keep him close, Seth pulled off a chunk of the chicken he'd come down the forge and dropped it on the floor. While foolish gobbled, Seth watched in puzzled amazement at the silhouettes heading for the dock. He come down to fill his empty belly, he was used to moving quietly, stuffed his mouth with chicken and listened to the men talk. They act like they were going to let him stay, even when they didn't know he was there to hear. They talked as if it was simply a fact. At least for now, he decided until they forget. Forgot they made a promise or no longer cared. He knew promises didn't mean squat, except Ray's. He believed Ray. Then he gone and died and ruined everything. Still, every night he spent in this house, between clean sheets with a puppy crow beside him, was an escape. What, Whatever they decided, whenever they decided to ditch him, he'd be ready to run. Because he died before he went back to where he'd been for Ray Quinn. The pup was nosing at the door, drawn by the sound of laughter and barking and shouts. Seth fed him more chicken to distract him. He wanted to go out too, to run across the lawn, join in that laughter, that fun, that family. But he knew he wouldn't be welcome. They'd stop and they'd stare at him as if they wondered where the hell he'd come from and what the hell they were supposed to do about it. Then they tell him to get back to bed. Oh, God. He wanted to stay. He just wanted to be here. Seth pressed his face against the screen, yearning with all his heart to belong. When he heard Ethan's long, laughing oath, the loud splash that followed it, and the roars of male satisfaction that came next, he grinned. And he stayed there, grinning even as tears escaped and trickled un unnoticed down his cheek. End of chapter 4